Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Western North Carolina fishing report with Dale Collins of Tuckasegee Fly Shop. How you doing, Dale? Doing good, Marvin. Hope you are. As always, just trying to stay out of trouble, and you know, kind of the theme on the fishing reports the last week or so is that Old Man Winter is loosening his grip in the Mid-Atlantic. Yeah, you know, it seems like that groundhog is, uh, you just never know if you can believe him or not. I've got daffodils coming up in my yard already, and usually we don't see those till March, so... Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be an early spring for Western North Carolina. I hope I don't jinx us, but it's looking good so far. There you go. Don't take the blade off the uh, snowplow yet. Um, the the uh, but you know, looking at your weather, you're going to get a fair amount of rain the next few weeks. And we were talking before we started recording. You know, the temperatures are going to jump up like into the 70s for a couple days, but. You know, we also wanted to kind of talk to people about not kind of taking the head fake on the air temperatures and remember that it's really water temperatures drives everything that goes on, right? That's right, yeah. And, you know, you got you got longer daylight now, so you, you do have a lot of good things happening in the water. Um, and, you know, on those days, you know, it's, it's that time of February where um, you will see some, some quill hatches kick off. You'll see some spring hatches kicking. Um, so, it, you know, we're kind of getting – into a little bit more, um, a little bit more choices than the blueing olive and black caddis, um, with whatever dropper of your choice kind of game, we can, we can start, you know, really dialing it in, um, on some red quills and, and things like that. Um, you may even see a March Brown fly around, uh, and certainly the black caddis are there as well and blueing olives, but you know, there's, there's, there's just a larger, uh, plate to be served up. Um, so, you know, Certainly, the water temperatures are going to be important. The overnight lows are going to be important to watch. You know, if you got a 20 degree morning and it's going to warm up to 65, you know, you might not see the same thing. But the next day, after that 65 and maybe a 40 degree night, you are going to see uh, some good things happening. So, yeah, just pay attention to the forecast. Um, you know, you got you got winter fighting spring, and um, you know, it looks like maybe maybe this week winter's going to win. We're going to get a little rain. And uh, maybe even a little shot of snow on Sunday. So it's just, it's ups and downs. It's, it's a roller coaster weather pattern for the next six weeks. Yeah. And the good news is, is those spring mayflies are a lot bigger than the winter ones. They absolutely are. Yeah. You can jump into, you know, 12s and 10s on, uh, on some of these things. So uh, if you've been squinting your eyes all winter, uh, tying on six and seven X to get through those 18s and, and smaller, then now you can come back and, uh, enjoy some tossing some larger flies yeah absolutely and you know also with the water warming up a little bit it makes the fish a little bit more likely to chase the streamers as well absolutely yeah you know um in in the uh, for western north carolina not necessarily like uh some of the other game streamer games you see maybe on the white river or whatnot where you see like giant articulated streamers you want to kind of stay in the small range you know woolly boogers are just fine um, I think as humans, you know, we, we obviously try to find a way to complicate everything, but, you know, just, just pay attention to those Creelix minnows, uh, Sculptzillas, uh, and woolly boogers, and, and don't try to go too large on the fly, the streamer selection if you're out there tossing streamers. Yeah. And also remember folks, you can, you can fish them dead drift under an indicator. Or you can jig them too. Oh, the chuck and duck. Yep. That's, uh, you know, these days, like you got this rain coming this week, that could be a real sneaky way to drum up some fish you know you can just do that from the bank you don't even have to really get out into water certainly any water that would be dangerous to wade but um you know focus on those bank eddies uh i remember the last big rain we had after we talked last time we had like five inches of rain and i drove up to the west fork of the pigeon and put my eyes on it at twelve thousand cfs or excuse me 1200 cfs um there were fish rising in the bank eddies uh to to uh, mergers in the film so um, it's not, a, if you're up here this week in this rain, it's not a complete washout. You'll find fish. You just gotta be willing to, to work a little, little uh, work a little harder for them. Yeah, there you go. And we also have a public service announcement about, uh, closures related to hatchery supported water, but not delayed harvest water. That's right. Yeah. North Carolina, while North Carolina wildlife closes hatchery supported waters for the month of March. So this is the green and white diamond that you see on the trees. Um, and then they will open, uh, the first Saturday in April, but that doesn't mean you can't fish anywhere else. So the great smoky mountain national park will remain open. You can fish that. And then you can also continue to fish delayed harvest anywhere across, uh, Western North Carolina. So, you know, whether it's the, the Ararat river up in Mount area or Wilson Creek, 
uh, or the Tucka CG or Nana Haler or Snowbird, you're still good to fish those to late harvest. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, always check the maps and check the trees for the markings. But, you know, as a general rule, that hatchery supported water is usually below the DH water on a particular stretch. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it's it's there, there's no scientific reason that I'm aware of that they close it other than to have an opening day in April uh, for folks to enjoy. So, yeah. Um, so we'll take that for what it's worth. Yeah, well, there you go. And, uh, you know, folks, we love questions on the articulate fly. You can email them to us. You can drop them in the comments on our social media posts, or you can DM us on Facebook or Instagram. And if we use your question, I will send you some articulate fly swag. And we'll enter a drawing for something cool from the shop at the end of the season. And, Dale, before I let you hop, you want to let folks know uh, locations, shop hours, and all that kind of good stuff? Absolutely. So easiest location off the, right off the bat is going to be tuckflyshop.com. We're always open there. So you can find out lots of intel on what we've got going on here in Western North Carolina. Uh, if you'd like to come see us in a shop, we're in downtown Waynesville, downtown Silva, and downtown Bryson City. So uh, give us a call, shoot us an email. We'll be glad to help you out. Uh, well, there you go, folks. It's time to get off the vice and get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Dale. You too, Marvin. <laughs>